he was a rebellious, he was a poet, he was a creator, and he died a little too soon. Basquiat made it so big that it's possible that contributed to his demise. You see Basquiat's work popping up in fashion. You see him being called out in music. Wall halls on my halls, wall. I got Basquiat's in the lobby of my spot. The promised land, I picture Porsche's Basquiat portraits. Red on the wall, Basquiat when I paint. That means he wasn't a flash in the pan. He wasn't just an 80s phenomenon. He's somebody like a Picasso or a Warhol whose name and work is going to resonate probably forever. The 80s were a time when an artist could go from literally sleeping on somebody's couch to being a multimillionaire overnight. It was that kind of excitement on the scene and they were looking for people to anoint as the next art superstar. And John michel was in the right place at the right time, but he also had the genius. John michel was a New York born, half Haitian, half Puerto Rican artist. He hooked up with Andy Warhol and all through it he produced brilliant, cryptic, but powerful art that still resonates. Back in the day, Jean-Michel was more of a street legend, you know, not accepted into the mainstream. There was an element of danger in New York City in the 80s. It's what we now look back on as edge. He wasn't just an artist that just painted on the wall and went home, you know, and slept and woke up and made breakfast, you know. He was in the streets, he was in the clubs, he was like a CBGB, he was rolling Madonna. John michel was part of a duo named Samo that used to graffiti weird and eerie and interesting little sayings on buildings. He was an artist of the street. He wasn't a, a manufactured artist. As a solo artist, uh, he did amazing work that incorporated social commentary, voodoo elements, all different aspects of the culture. He would comment on power struggles, comment on racism. In the 80s, black culture was becoming much more noticed by the white mainstream thanks to things like hip-hop music and breakdancing. And I think John michel was part of putting a spotlight on black culture in a way that the art world usually didn't pay attention to because they can be racist. But his genius broke through those barriers and they had to note, take notice of him. John michel works consist of uh, an outside art technique which is kind of a childish approach to art. One of the first pieces that caught my eye was the Pet Dispenser. And it was a Tyrannosaurus Rex, black with, with red lines and drawing around it, with the crown on it over his head. And it was, it's quite poetic because the Tyrannosaurus Rex in the dinosaur world is the king, you know? So to put that sim those two symbols, meaning like two symbols of dominance together, was just absolutely brilliant. Beautiful white background, so, so amazing. I think the way that John michel used the crown is unique because this crown rep represents the king. And him putting it out there like that, as that is his symbol, represents he's the king of the streets or he's the king of the art world because he wasn't accepted in the mainstream art world. Basquiat wanted to be famous. He was very self-promoting. He went after Andy Warhol. He would sit outside his, his studio day after day waiting for Andy to catch on to his genius, and he did. Andy wasn't stupid. In the 80s, to have a black artist become prominent within a high society, that, that was special. The art world almost ate him alive because his work was so brilliant and potent and innovative and combined so many different aspects of the culture that he clearly was a unique voice. But basically, they all respected his genius and did not begrudge him the success that he had. So we all know that he had a problem with narcotics. And I think that sometimes when you have that problem, you're fighting, fighting demons. The part where John michel died of an overdose is the tragic part because it didn't have to happen. Basquiat is still incredibly popular, probably more so than ever, because he brought exotic and fascinating elements of different cultures together into works 
that made statements. He was ahead of his time, but that's, I think, why he made it so big at that time. People recognized that this was a groundbreaking artist. Uh, and today there's more understanding than ever, the more knowledge about his life and his craft. So the appreciation just keeps growing.